is lightning. So you're thinking of moving to Port Orange, Florida, but you better know these five negatives that might scare you away. If you want to find out more, make sure you stay tuned. What's up everybody, it's Jim Dead and Brian with the For Sale team right here in Port Orange, Florida. If you're new to the channel and you want to know everything about working, sleeping, playing, eating, buying and or selling anywhere here in the Port Orange area, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. We have people reaching out literally every single day and we love it. Whether it's buying, selling, moving or relocating. If you're thinking of making the move, make sure you reach out, shoot me a call, text, email, message in a bottle, or schedule a Zoom in the link down below. However you reach us, we've got your back when you're moving to Port Orange, Florida. Let's get into it. 10 years ago, Port Orange might have been regarded as a sleepy little surfside beach town. Well, if that's what you're looking for, don't come here. It's not anymore. To be completely blunt and honest with you, Port Orange what used to be a sleepy surfer's beach town, like what New Smyrna is, it's not necessarily the case anymore. Some might consider it a secondary metro to Daytona. Some might call it a baby Daytona. Now, traffic here during rush hour can get pretty congested right on Clyde Morris Avenue. And also, the, the area itself is just very busy, so to speak. It's gotten more developed over time. They've done a lot more building out, so it kind of blends in with South Daytona, so it's hard to even decipher, really, there which in between. There's a line. Yeah, <laughs> that, it's, that's so... But, I mean, it does still have that... It still has a little port town feel. It still has, you know, on the on the island side of it, it still has that, that feeling over by the Correct. over by the lighthouse and the beach. It still has that, you know, kind of sleepy thing, but you can definitely, uh, as you go inland, it doesn't feel... It doesn't maintain that feeling. No, sure. absolutely. It's definitely, it's kind of beachside... Inland Daytona feeling, <laughs> buildings, condo hotels, pretty much now tourism. This, this area is, is is great to visit. It's great for tourism. It, it's it's a really good place to settle down if you're looking to raise a family there. I just like to set the realistic expectations that a lot of people they you know they're they're reading these online blogs. They're they're looking at these posts and they're they have this image of what Port Orange is and. The way that they describe it is not what it is. <laughs> so if you're looking for a sleepy surfside beach town, this isn't the place for you. But if you want to check out the new Smyrna Beach area. Which, That's more of a, definitely which, more of that feeling still. Oh yeah. So it's, if you've ever been to California and you've ever been to Huntington Beach, new Smyrna Beach is literally the East Coast version of Huntington Beach. Or, or Laguna Beach also. Or Laguna That's Beach. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but if you want to learn more about new Smyrna uh, Beach and pros and cons and all that kind of stuff, cost of living, just hit the little button up above here, the little tile, and uh, you can learn more about that if that's what you're looking for. With New Smyrna Beach being so close, you might already know what the nickname for this area is, and it's gonna be the shark attack capital of the world. Yeah, I said, I said that right. Now, <laughs> Port Orange is right here, New Smyrna Beach is right here. They share the same water, right? They share the same inlet. They share, they share the same inlet as well. Literally, the only dividing line is the inlet that you go from Smyrna Dunes to the Ponce Inlet Lighthouse. And you can literally see right across, you can see the lighthouse and everything of the sort. Now, due to this inlet, you get great waves, which is phenomenal, right? It's beautiful, it's amazing. But with that also comes sharks. With the inlet, it's attracting a lot of feeder fish. Um, it's just, they're fed right into that inlet. And so the sharks, essentially, it turns into a feeding frenzy area, which is why New Smyrna Beach is the shark attack capital of the world. Yeah. So, and what else is cool, like what I like about the, um, the Port Orange Beach is, well, one, you can drive on it just like the other beaches. Uh, um, two, the, the jetty itself is, has a big long walkway on it, so you can fish off it a lot easier, except on that side of the jetty, or the side of the inlet, the waves come and crashing into the jetty, and it's kind of a fun place to just kind of get, you know, sit and get splashed by the water, good for kids, as long as it doesn't knock them off, it's, you know, you know they go... It's where you can get those like really cool, the really cool pictures where the waves are just crashing over behind yeah. you and you're just, you know, smiling and posing. It's that place. That's where you can do that. It's awesome. It's awesome. And the fishing there is really good. You can catch some red snappers 
And, uh, and as you're over there, some really cool, there's a lot of sea turtles there. There's little turtles just floating around everywhere and needlefish. Needlefish, a lot of needlefish. So no, it's a really great beach to go to. So definitely when you get down the beach, the parking's not bad. Uh, it's not super packed. And the waves, um, if you're, they're good, like long roller waves. And, and if you're like a kind of a more of a looking for a calmer, longer tube, <laughs> apparently. So uh, it's uh, definitely a cool place for a longboard. All that kind of stuff. So when you're at Smyrna Dunes in East Smyrna and you're looking across the inlet, you'll see the Ponce Inlet Lighthouse. Now it's this awesome lighthouse, it's ancient, and it's still in use today. You will see that thing swinging its light around, directing traffic. <laughs> directing traffic. <laughs> that's how it works. Yep, that's how it works. Yeah, we know, we know that stuff. I own a boat. <laughs> so, yeah, and what's cool is you can go visit, you can actually like walk up the lighthouse and check it out. It's a long, um, make sure you got your cardio going because it's a long haul up some stairs, but man, what a great workout. But once you get to the top, the views off of that thing are amazing. It's a little breezy up there, but you can see everywhere and it's so cool. Um, it feels like climbing Everest when you're going up yeah. there because like the steps as you're going to the top because it gets skinnier and skinnier and the steps get steeper. Yeah, steeper. And so literally you bring one foot up and you're literally just <laughs> stepping up three feet as you're going up for foot. It, it's, it's pretty nuts. It's um, pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty and then... And then also, if you like, what's cool on that side uh, over in Port Orange, there's parasailing. You can rent jet skis and go inside the inlet. There's a boat ramp. You have a boat. And one of the coolest things over there is Disappearing Island. Oh, yeah. So when the tide gets high, there's an island outside in the inlet um, that actually disappears. Like it, the, the, the um, tide covers the island, but you can go out there and walk on the island while it's, while it's submerged. So you can't really see it from the thing. So when you're sitting, let's say a hidden, hidden treasure uh, restaurant or wherever out on the balcony, you're looking right over that. It looks like people are walking on the water and a lot of people, and there's kind of two ways to get over to it. You got to have either a watercraft of some sort, or you can swim the channel from the, from the boat ramp over or for wherever we can go, get off of and uh but i do warn you the current the undertow on that thing is deceiving and hard so you better be a good swimmer or bring a noodle or life jacket because it can be deceptively uh strong current it's a it's similar for for those of you that that know the destin area crab island in destin similar situation just maybe not quite as massive of an island but that current that is just sweeping through and a lot of people don't quite know until they're out in the water itself <laughs> you'll get swept out into the yeah. ocean if you're not paying attention so just take some you know just heed our warnings take you know precautions as don your water wings <laughs> or your noodles baby your noodles I think water wings are cuter though they're pretty sick i used to have a pair they don't fit my big guns <laughs> so port orange being the closest bigger area to new smyrna right new smyrna you've got the you still you still have the town type atmosphere right port orange once you go north you start to dip into the more corporate type businesses and such so right as you get off the freeway um going on to port orange you have the pavilions there at the pavilions you've got the low you've got the more corporate bigger stores you've got marshalls you've got home goods you've got petco if you've got a pet you've got all the the chain fast food areas as well that are surrounding that little shopping area and as you go down towards the heart of Port Orange, then you got the rest of the corporate stuff. You, you also have uh, Walmart, you have Home Depot, you have all the bigger box stores. Walgreens. Yep. It covers all your bases, basic needs. Like if you're, if you're uh, unlike New Smyrna where you, you know, you don't have as many of those things, you're only like, if you're in New Smyrna, you're only like 15, 10, 15 minutes away from that. You only have um, the Walmart that's in New Smyrna in terms of the bigger. Uh, yeah. And and a Beals. That's about it. Beals, baby. <laughs> Beals, baby. And then two Publixes, but yeah. who's counting, right? But as you go deeper into Port Orange, that's when things start to, to differ a bit, right? You go from the freeway, or you, you go off of 95, you get into Port Orange, you got all the corporate stuff, right? And as you go deeper and deeper into Port Orange, as you go towards the beach, things start to get older, things start to get a lot more local, you start to running you start running into more family businesses, ways to keep the money in the city itself and not necessarily go outside to a corporation and such. And you, you start to get more of that beachy atmosphere that people, Local feel. people always idolize, people always talk about in the area. And they, whenever you, you, you mention it to someone that's been in the area a while, you, you know, it almost, uh, they get like the, they go into deep thought and they think about the better days. Nostalgia. 
just just nostalgia and just it's how it used to be how how things used to be and now they live in New Smyrna one thing about uh, 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 Port Orange it's not necessarily again like we said it's not the old sleepy beach town that it used to be um, and one reason of that is because it's got more shopping so if you don't like those like corporate style shopping you know outdoor shopping centers or if you don't like the corporate like Popeye's chicken and all that kind of stuff not single them out or anything but if you don't like those types of restaurants you know having more of those and more and less local stuff then you're not gonna like it there and it, it, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world having big you know corporate stores and such it definitely make things makes things a lot more convenient to say the least I mean I hey I'm guilty of it myself I, I shop at Publix Walmart Sam's Club Costco you name it I love those stores I end up going to Port Orange or I end up going to Daytona for those very stores because I mean convenience to be completely blunt it's just a lot more convenient everything is there you don't have to hit you know five different stores to get everything you need you can get knock everything off of your list you can knock everything that's on your list off in one go so convenience convenience so the weather here in port orange is phenomenal if you're looking at the port orange area and you live in minnesota you live in washington you live in new york you're probably looking at florida looking at all of these videos of florida and you're just jealous Good. We want you to come on down here to Port Orange, Florida. The weather here is beautiful. It's sunny most of the year. You're not going to have to deal with any snow whatsoever. Yes, I understand some of you have sent me messages about this. I get it. There has been some freak accidents before in the past where it has snowed in Florida. But I can <laughs> guarantee you people don't come here to Florida because of the snow. No. <laughs> uh, it's very, very sunny here. It's very warm. It's very moist to say the least. Yeah. It's, so if you don't like moisture, like we always say, then you don't come here because it's, it's very moist. You will change your clothes a couple times a day. Sometimes in the, you know, the, the hot summer months, it's starting to cool down now though. It's oh, nice. Yeah. It's phenomenal and This time right of year now. right now is beautiful. We're starting to drop down into the lower 80s. Uh, the nights are getting a little cooler. The walks on the beach in the morning and at night are phenomenal. Oh, just it's, perfect it's a weather. cool breeze that's literally just perfect or it's it's that nice middle it's, area where you can't feel anything. it's that southern california 75 degree feel that's what it is but you got to deal with the 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 months of of crazy sweaty heat okay there is some crazy that you do have to deal with here in port orange the biggest biggest weather phenomenons that are that are crazy that <laughs> mean or that aren't exactly the most ideal would have to be the hurricanes for one i know that's one of the biggest things on your mind that you're thinking of uh, it scared me shitless just even considering moving to Florida. I always thought my family that moved here was insane because I always met I had this preconceived image in my head that Florida was just this barren flat area and just hurricanes just came through and just ripped the entire place apart. Like I for some reason I was thinking in my head that Florida was restarting every single time. <laughs> <laughs> like I used to think that too. Like, I used to think these places that get hurricanes. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, like their houses fall down or float away, and they just build another one and just float away, and then build. These are one. all new. They yeah, just built this that. again. You know, th th that's literally. And, <laughs> and they can't be that bad because there's some houses that have been around for so long, and they're old oh. wood houses. I don't even know how they. I've sold it. quite a few uh, hundred plus year home, year old homes here in Florida. They are they are here, for sure. sure. And some of these houses, actually one of the most recent houses that I went and checked out with a, with a client of ours, literally had the original roof on from oh, 1904. Yeah. How does that happen in this area? That's ridiculous. <laughs> that, that is a sick roof. <laughs> like, it, it, it was pretty insane. Yeah, if it's it ain't really... broken, then don't fix it. Exactly. <laughs> I guess. But that property insurance, though. Probably. <laughs> but now they're, you know, they've built all the houses out of cinder block, so... Everything's. I mean, the, the, everything's pretty. No solid. one's dumping money into Florida if they think it's gonna be re if it's gonna be washed away back into the ocean. I mean, these houses that they're building, these condos, these apartments, just maybe not down in Miami, but the ones up here at least, they're they're built pretty pretty solid, you know. Oh yeah. Um, they're they're made to withstand some pretty gnarly weather. Yeah. So yeah, despite the recent recent things that have happened in the Condotel area. That's that's it's that wasn't Daytona. Daytona. That wasn't Daytona. Well, and, 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 and everything, everything checked everything out, so everything's everything's good to go. Another thing that you have to deal with, just to add to the list of craziness here in Port Orange, is lightning. 
Uh, Florida is actually regarded as the lightning capital of the United States. Now, of the United States, it sounds pretty big, sounds pretty bold, but when you compare it to the rest of the world, it doesn't even rank top 10 in top places with most lightning. But in terms of the US, we have number one. Lightning here is insane. It's crazy. It is the most, some might call it beautiful, some might call it terrifying. I personally it's think both. it's it's both. It's <laughs> both. Uh, that's, that's it's beautifully accurate. terrifying. It's, it's, you know, you, you go outside and you literally, if you see arcs just shooting across the sky right overhead, it's your first initial reaction is to just probably run inside and just be absolutely terrified. Now I'm not advising anyone to go out and just stay out and watch the lightning by any means. By all means, if you get struck, you didn't hear it from me. But disclaimer. I personally love going out and watching the lightning, especially when it rolls out over the ocean. Beautiful. And you can just see strike the water and just fan out everywhere. I personally feel a lot safer when it, you wait for the storm to pass and then you're just watching the lightning as it's going out over the ocean. That's my personal favorite. And you, if you go out and you will you do that very thing, you'll see a ton of other people that flock to the beaches just to admire it because it is so beautiful and I highly recommend it. Check it out. So here in Florida, we have a subtropical climate. It's hot, it's humid, it's warm, it's moist, and it's buggy. <laughs> and it's buggy. <laughs> Literally, these conditions are perfect and ideal for bugs to thrive here. You've got literally bugs. If you go outside and you look down at your feet and you pan up, so you look down and then you literally look forward and then look up, you will have literally just seen over 500 different types of bugs just Absolutely. right there in that one little scan. You've got fire ants that are constantly on the move to catch you not paying attention. If you wear Crocs, if you wear flip flops and you just happen to just be, you know, just trudging through ant hills and such, you're gonna regret it. And you're gonna start watching where you're stepping because they're awful. You will step into an ant mound and Five everywhere. seconds later, you've got literally a, maybe 10 to 100 just right there on your feet. And if you don't spot them away before they all just give the green light, they're all going to sting you at the exact same time. Oh, they, they synchronize just, it every time. They do. <laughs> it's like, one, two, three, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you got, yeah, go ahead. you got rhino beetles. You got, oh, right now we got cicadas. Ugh. And they are loud. <laughs> they're awful. It's like, it's like. It's like the death rattle scream. Like when you're walking by the trees and there's a bunch of them, like here you come and it's just like, and it gets like this pitch. Maybe it's just me or something, but I imagine that's what hell's like. Oh. Just full of cicadas, just making noise. <laughs> Brian, tell us cicadas. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's definitely, especially, we, so we went camping recently, right? And the cicadas were out and we didn't, we weren't expecting it. It was literally the very first night of the season when cicadas like started coming back and so we're in our tents and everything and literally not a single peep we haven't even heard cicadas since moving here to florida we're in our tent everything's good and all of a sudden just in unison the bugs here are in sync it is nuts the fire ants will all sting at the same time and the cicadas will all start yelling at the exact same time as well but all of a sudden it is just it goes from silent to just deafening and it is just <laughs> rattling the tent kind of loud like it's nuts you go outside and literally they get louder and louder as you get closer to the tr whatever tree that they're on. They, they get louder and they piss off the ones in the other trees. And it's nuts. It's, it's absolutely crazy. insane. Um, another thing to add to the list is the fleas. Fleas here in Florida are absolutely awful. Now, New Smyrna, Port Orange, Daytona, it's all in the same. Fleas will end up on your dog at one point or another. Now with fleas, especially since they just hop onto your dog, it's very hard to prevent them. I mean, when you're out and about, I mean, they're, when you're out and about and they're going through the, you know, through the woods or stuff with you, or you're know, just running through fields and such with your dog, they're gonna end up hopping on the dog. It is, and that, and that's a big fear for someone like him with this luscious mane. You don't want fleas in there. I mean, look at that. I mean, could you imagine with fleas in there? Probably have a couple in there right now, honestly. Dude, I think there's a bird in there. Probably. And a lizard. Dude. Oh, lizards! There's so many lizards right oh, now. There's a ton of lizards. Speaking of lizards. Speaking of lizards. I mean, they're all, they're all over the place. They've got this big. Little and ones. Then big, big ones. ones. Now, here in, here, here in Port Orange, Daytona area, it's, it's not necessarily quite as common, but in other parts of Florida, in, in Tampa especially, they get the big invasive iguanas. 
in South Florida, especially. Iguana. They get the big ing invasive iguanas, and people actually hunt them for fun because they're invasive. And I mean, you want to talk big lizards, and people are literally catching lizards literally this big for fun. It actually rains iguanas here in the in the in the fall or winter time. I think they uh, they because they're cold blooded. They're, they hang out in the trees, and then when the temperature drops to a certain thing, they actually just fall asleep and fall out of the trees. So people will be walking in the park, and literally, uh, they'll, like, iguanas will just start dropping and just hitting the ground. And they think they're dead, but they're not. They're just... It's just they cloudy just hibernate. with a chance of iguanas. <laughs> exactly. I've always wanted that to happen. It's not uh, happened to me. Can you yet. imagine just, like, that story? You're just, like... Especially when you're like filming a video or something, and you just bump a tree and a freaking iguana just. Oh, he's just walking all of a sudden. Can you imagine knocked out by an iguana? You're knocked, out by an, iguana. <laughs> That's you're knocked out by an unconscious iguana. Like, what a story. That would be. That would be a definitely a campfire story for sure. <laughs> so, if you're, you know, if, if we haven't scared you off yet, and you're still thinking of making the move, if you want to give getting hit by an iguana a shot, by all means, feel free to reach out, shoot me a call, text, email, message in a bottle, or schedule a Zoom. In the link down below if port orange doesn't seem to be the right area for you feel free to listen or, or check out our other videos on daytona and in new smyrna as well uh they'll give you a little more insight into those areas to see if you know one of those areas are more right for you but you know what you gotta reach out you gotta reach out to us give us a call if we uh, you know if you need help you gotta reach out you can't just watch these videos i mean i know they're good but you know what I'm saying? Make sure you reach out, shoot me a call, text, email, message in a bottle, or schedule a Zoom in the link down below. And if there's any other videos you guys want us to do topics, any other topics you want us to do videos on, sorry, um, put in the comments down below what you'd like to know about, and we will go do that work for you and figure it out and make a video about it. Let us know. Let us know. But however you need to reach us, we've got your back when you're moving to Port Orange, Florida. Thanks for watching.